first snowfall of the year, but fortunately it was just a brief flurry. At the end of March I became a car owner again when my old friend Rob Halley gifted me his Citroen C4. In June and July the nation was preoccupied with the progress of the England football team as it made its way to the final of the European Championship. which, unfortunately, ended in defeat on penalties to Italy. In late July it was great to see some proper live music again, and the friendly fire band at the Buttermarket Shrewsbury were just the ticket. As the UK and Europe reopened again after the Covid-19 lockdown, it was time to resume my Camino de Santiago in Spain. This gate in Burgos was featured in the Martin Sheen movie, The Way. My accommodation in Hornillos del Camino was this very comfortable albergue. The section of the Camino I walked this time included the Maceta, which translates as plateau or plain in English, and this kind of image sums up the terrain. So walking next to a canal was quite a relief on some days. These three Camino friends, Davide, Christina and Abby, were great company on the road. Bar Elvis in Raliegos was one of the most memorable bars I've come across on the Camino. Leon is one of the major cities on the Camino Francaise and its cathedral is a stunning building. This meal is pig's cheek, a popular dish in Spain that tastes much more delicious than it sounds. And while I was in this part of Spain, I had to get a selfie with one of the kings of Leon. Most pilgrims will know how this chap feels. Even away from the tourist resorts in Spain, you can get a decent English breakfast, though they tend to use wiener type sausages instead of proper Spanish bangers. One of my walking pals on the trail was Dries from Ghent, Belgium, and during this stage he was having trouble with stones in his boots. but he had no problem showing off the comfortable hotel room he had booked in the village of Rabanal del Camino. At 
the Cruz de Ferro, it's customary to leave a stone in memory of a loved one. And I was no exception to that tradition. Fonce Bedon is the highest point of the Camino Francais. And getting down the other side of the mountain was quite a challenging trek. Stunning views though. When I reached Ponferrada, that marked the end of my Camino for this year. But I'll be back in July 2022. I returned to the UK via Barcelona. and took in the atmosphere outside the Espanyol vs Atletico Madrid game. I spotted this lady with a Liverpool and Espanyol half and half scarf. As tickets for the match were only available for members, I had to watch the game in a bar. This is me outside the Pinocchio food stall in Bocaria Market in Barcelona. Where this legendary gentleman serves up fantastic food. Back in the UK, and it's a first away trip to see Shrewsbury Town for quite some time. A 1-1 draw against Sheffield Wednesday. In September I went to see UB40, supported by Neville Staple, at an open air show in West Bromwich. And at the end of October I flew to Berlin for a few days. I visited the usual sites such as the Berlin Zoo, and Checkpoint Charlie. I made a pilgrimage to David Bowie's old apartment in Berlin, as well as Hansa Studios where many of his great tunes were recorded. Of course I had to buy a Bowie album in Berlin and I managed to pick up a vinyl copy of the next day at this record shop. I went to see a show called Arise at the Friedrichstrat Palast which was very entertaining. On a more sombre note, the Berlin Bunker Story Museum was an excellent examination of Hitler's rise to power and his ultimate downfall. And of course, you can't go to Berlin without seeing the area where the wall once divided the city.
The Kaufhaus de Westens, or KDV, is one of Berlin's most prestigious department stores. From Berlin, I flew down to Malaga for a bit of winter sun in the Costa del Sol. Though that was just a short visit on the way to Gibraltar to see my friend Lyndon, who lives on the rock. We went to see one of the local sides, Lincoln Red Imps versus Slovan Bratislava in the UEFA Europa Conference League. The Slovakians ran out 4-1 winners. And after four days in Gibraltar, I walked over the border back into Spain and caught the bus to Fuengirola. An afternoon in Marbella was a highlight of my short stay on the Costa del Sol. Though in the mountains above Fuengirola, Mijas was a beautiful, if slightly commercialised example of an Andalusian village. But, if you ever happen to find yourself in the village, the Panaderia de Mariaquero has some great snacks, as well as a lot of local beverages. In December, I reviewed the pantomime Cinderella in Wolverhampton for What's On magazine. And later that month, for the first time since 2019, a family Christmas dinner. And as I look forward to 2022, the year of the tiger, the animal character in Japanese culture under which I was born, this is a significant year for me, as I reach the big 6-0. I hope that you found my reminiscence of 2021 interesting, and thank you for listening. Happy New Year!